Hey guys, it's me, Ralph, again. Um, here we are in the Book of Acts again. And uh, I'm just so excited to be able to share with you. I'm actually going to share with you today uh, from the Book of Acts, chapter 16. Uh, Pastor Max did an amazing job yesterday just sharing the word. And, um, you know, as we read through the Book of Acts, what we're seeing here is the move of the Holy Spirit. Uh, just the Holy Spirit manifesting itself in a special way uh, as the church is being established, as we said it stated before. And again, we're we're, re, we're re going through the Book of Acts because we're trying to reframe the way the church thinks, right? We're in the situation right now where the church is is uh, not being operated in the way that it would normally do. Uh, we're meeting constantly, but again, we have opportunities to be creative in this time and this season to be a light and love one another in a, in a way that's different from what we're used to. So um, here we are in the book of Acts chapter 16 and again the story goes on Luke's doing a great job of, of just documenting the story of Paul. Now Paul has had this major disagreement with Barnabas and Barnabas now took John Mark underneath his wing like he does. He's just a, a, the Bible says that his name is a son of encouragement and so uh, he pulls in John Mark Paul breaks away and he goes with Silas and here we are Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16 and we get our first introduction to Timothy, uh, which becomes Paul's spiritual son. And if you read the book, or the book of First Timothy, you'll see that as he, Paul, speaks to Timothy and speaks into his life. And Timothy becomes a young pastor. And uh, here it gives just this beautiful introduction of who Timothy is, how he came into the picture, and how he eventually he becomes Paul's spiritual son. So as I read here, one of the things that I pull out of this is, again, the move of the Spirit. God, Jesus, is establishing His church. He's growing His church. And so, guys, you know, I don't know where you're at, but you got to understand something. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's Word will never pass away. The church will grow. The church will flourish. It may look different, but we can't be afraid of difference. We can't be afraid of change. And so I really do believe that this is why God is allowing some of these situations to happen today the way they are is because it opens our eyes to, to be open to the fact that uh, church is not going to be done the same way. We don't know when the doors are going to be open. We don't know what's going to happen. But it doesn't change the fact that we need to be faithful, number one, to God, uh, to the calling, and to be obedient to what God has asked us to do. And this is exactly what I see here in Acts chapter 16. Uh, when I look at Paul and Silas in this story, um, again, we've heard many preachings. If you've heard many preachings from the book of Acts, this is uh, the story where uh, Paul goes down and he has his vision of this man from Macedonia. Again, being a man of the spirit, a man of prayer, the Holy Spirit speaks to him. Uh, and this is what we're seeing, just the manifestation of the Holy Spirit speaking into the lives of these apostles, speaking to the lives of these people that want to move the gospel forward. And we're seeing that, again, a vision is given to Paul and, and he says that he sees this man from Macedonia, come, come, preach the gospel, we're ready. And he goes and preaches the gospel and next thing you know, they find themselves uh, sailing to Troas in verse 11 and they meet with Lydia and Lydia is here and they're sitting there and they're sharing the gospel. Lydia gives her life to the Lord. She's a woman of business. She's a, an entrepreneur. She's into the, in the textile uh, business and she gives her life to God and to Jesus and she invites him into their household and Paul then baptized her and, uh, and you see again the gospel being spread. Uh, and then next thing you know that Paul and Silas are out there and this is what I love about Paul and Silas Every, everywhere they went the first thing they did is they went to the, into the synagogues first to the Jews first uh, why Paul had this loyalty he had he knew where he came from he knew that he was able to persuade or even able to share with those who were like minded like he was at one time uh, he didn't change the fact that he was Jewish but he was able to, to connect the Old Testament to the works of Jesus and what Jesus came to do and he was able to navigate through those prophecies and share with the Jewish people apologetically um, what uh, what Jesus came and able to show them and point to Jesus as the Messiah and so that's why I really do believe that he went to the Jew first because I think he felt that they would understand more than anyone else uh, why Jesus came who he was the Messiah and being able to go through the book of Isaiah the book of Psalms all these books of the Old Testament and be able to share with them hey these are all prophetic things that were pointing to this person that I'm sharing with you you guys know who I am Paul the persecutor of the church saw at the one time now Paul um, 
and he was able to share with them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I, I, that's, that's just my own opinion of why he went to the Jew first. Um, but it didn't stop him. And, and what I get from this, Acts chapter 16, and again, it, it, they're, they're great stories here. They're great manifestations of the Holy Spirit. But what I see in Paul is a relentless spirit. A spirit that says in his heart and mind that, you know what, no matter what comes my way, no matter what difficulties I face, no matter what adversity I face, because I was even one that persecuted. So I, I know the motivation of the Jews. I know the motivation of why they persecute because I was on that side. And because I know these things, I'm able to say, you know what, no matter what comes my way, no matter what I face, kind of like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, no matter if you throw me in the fire, no matter how hot you make the fire, I still want to bow. And even if God does not deliver me, I still won't bow. And this is what I see, this relentless spirit, this relentless desire to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what does that speak to my heart? What that speaks to my heart is, you know what? Am I doing everything I can? Am I taking advantage of every opportunity that I have to when I, when presented with the opportunity, am I doing what I can to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus, to be a light in the midst of darkness, to be kind, to be gentle, to be loving, to smile, that in, even in the spite of this, per, uh, of this time of uncomfortableness and, and things are not easy, that I'm able to say, you know what, I'm going to do my best to share the gospel of Jesus by the way that I live, by the way that I conduct myself, by the way that I speak. And one of the amazing stories in here is obviously uh, Paul and Silas are out there preaching. And as they're preaching, there's a young lady who's filled with a demonic spirit of divination or a spirit that is able to forecast and tell uh, the future. And people are profiting from her. And as, as uh, she's following Paul, she's saying uh, uh, in a loud voice, hey, and Paul and Silas, uh, you know, these are men from God. And Paul, the Bible says here that he gets aggravated with her. He gets like annoyed and he finds these says, you know what, in the name of Jesus, commands that spirit to leave her body. And obviously it causes them, uh, it causes great problems because she was being handled by some people. They were profiting off her giftings. Uh, they were demonically um, uh, influenced. And uh, and so they get mad. They bring them before the magistrates. They throw Paul and Silas into the inner jail. Not just any jail, the inner jail. And Paul and Silas, again, that relentless spirit, Guys, we need to be relentless in this time. What do I mean? Do we need to just force our belief and our strongs, our, 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 um, our belief on other people? No. What we need to do is be relentless with opportunities are presented to us and recognizing by the power of the Holy Spirit that we have that opportunity to be a light in the midst of darkness. And uh, so we see here that they get thrown in jail. And we've heard this preaching. I've heard it uh, several hundreds of times when here they are, you know, in the midnight hour just singing psalms and hymns. What does that show? Just again, that relentless desire to not give up, that, that persuasion of God. Uh, I know there's, there's a song, though none go with me, still I will follow. I have decided to follow Jesus, though none go with me, still I will follow. And this is what I see here with Paul and Silas. They have this desire to say, you know what, though none go with me, still I will follow. And here they are singing hymns. All of a sudden, the Spirit of God moves, the jail shakes, the shackles come off. Uh, and, and I really do believe that, that, that it don't matter what we're struggling, what we're facing, what difficulty, that if we would just continue to say, you know what, I'm going to just be still, know that he is God. And in the midst of this persecution, in the midst of this struggle, in the midst of this darkness, in the midst of these shackles that I may be in, I'm going to find a way to praise God. I'm going to find a way to glorify him. And that's what they did. And in the midst of all that, the shackles came off. And what was the result of that? What does God do? He brings the shackles off. He sets them free. For what reason? So that the purpose was that that jailer who was there could witness, who was about to take his life, because he knew that if everyone was gone, he was going to lose his life anyway. So he was going to just take his life. But they were there. Men of integrity. They could have ran. They could have, oh, God set us free. Let's run. No, Paul stood there. Why? Because Paul, a man of the spirit, understood this was an opportunity to share with this Gentile jailer 
the power of God. That guy saw the jail open. He saw the shackles fall off. And you see the result of it here in Acts chapter 16. That as the jail cell open and the shackles fall off, Paul was able to share with him the good news of Jesus Christ. Again, taking advantage of the opportunity, recognizing, oh my God, God is moving. God is doing something. Here's an opportunity. And because of that, he was able to share the good news and somebody, and not only the jailer got saved, but his whole family got saved and they were all baptized. So what do we walk away with this is? We walk away from this story understanding the fact that, listen, God is in the midst of every situation that we're facing. Uh, he's in control. He is sovereign. So we need to put our eyes on him and know that no matter what happens, what we face, if we'll just praise him, if we'll just take a moment out to just be still and just be silent and allow God to speak to our hearts, that he'll move just like he did in this situation. Paul and Silas were not praising God and singing hymns because they wanted to be free. They were praising him. They were praising God and singing hymns because they love God. And no matter what was coming, they had a, a relentless spirit to say, no matter what happens, we're going to continue to worship and praise God. And from that spirit, from that desire, God opens up opportunities for us to be a light and share the gospel with others. So I just want to encourage you guys that in this time, listen, we're not going to be perfect. We're all going to fall short. But when opportunities present themselves, Lord, I pray right now that when opportunities present themselves, help me to be sensitive so that I may share the gospel and be a light to those who are in darkness. That I can put my own feelings, my own struggles, my own things aside and say, you know what, no matter what, what I may face, I'm going to go beyond that and I'm going to share the good news of Jesus because it's worth it. Because knowing Jesus, knowing the good news, is worth it all. And it reminds me of in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4 when he says, you know, we are persecuted in all things. But we are pressed down, uh, but not shaken. Uh, you know, when he talks about just the, the importance of just staying focused on the things that God has called us to do, right? I, I'll read it out of the Amplified. He goes, we are, we are hedged about, pressed on every side, troubled and oppressed in every way, but not cramped or crushed. We suffer embarrassments and yet not perplexed and unable to find the way out, but not driven to despair. We are persuade, pursued, persecuted and hard driven, but not deserted to stand alone. We are struck down to the ground, but never struck, struck out and destroyed, always carrying about in the body the liability and exposure to the same putting to death the Lord that Jesus Christ suffered, so that the resurrection, the life of Jesus may be shown forth by and in our bodies. Man, does that speak volumes? This is the mentality that Paul had. This is what we're seeing demonstrated. We see it in Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8, when he says this and he shares that with them. But we see it demonstrated here in Acts chapter 16. No matter what came in Paul Silas's way, they, they, the sufferings, the persecution, they, they endured it all for the sake of Jesus so that the gospel could be spread. So in this time, I, you know, hey, I'm not, I may not be as strong as Paul and Silas, but my desire is that I will be obedient, that I will have the opportunity, God, when it, when it arises, to be able to be brave enough, have the courage enough to be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And no matter what I'm going through, set myself aside and be that light in the midst of darkness. So love you guys and hope you guys uh, continue to just obey the Holy Spirit and, and do what he's asked you to do uh, in this time. God bless.